All right, in three, two, one, here we go. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing on this fine Thursday morning, afternoon, evening? Um, I'm Chit Fahadens. This person in the mirror somewhere is Boyd Chambers. And uh, we were just talking about podcasts. So this is how this presentation is going to go. I got a message from Caleb here, one of our members saying he's just listening, but not watching this live stream. So to be descriptive, uh, I will be as descriptive as I can without hindering our presentation. So we hauled everything out of the closet and it's all around me, but it's a lot of gear. I'm not sure we can go through all of it in an hour. Uh, I see people are already leaving this room because it's too embarrassing. Anyway, um, I hope you stick around, uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We're going to talk about anamorphic stuff. Um, while everybody's jumping in, we're going to talk about lights. So these are the lights that we usually have uh, for everything. And it's it's everything very small. Did you point to that light? Yeah. We have this light, which is a Godox VL150 with a giant 120 centimeters. I don't know how many inches is that um, softbox. And that's been our key light for what? Five months, yeah. almost six months now. Um, yeah, we bought it for the beginning of the cookbook and it's sticking around. We're now considering getting another one. Uh, it's pretty great. Uh, I actually got it on recommendation of the fellow filmmaker channel. Uh, Heather there was just discussing a bunch of different uh, COB lights and this one jumped out as a silent battery powered alternative. So that's what I went for. What is COB like? COB is chip on the board? It's something about that. I'm going to have to Google it. Hold up. COB light. It's got to do with LEDs. Yes, a uh, chip on board. Yeah, but yes, it has to do with LEDs. And uh, this is an LED light. It's pretty strong. I love it. Uh, it's Blake's favorite light, in case you were wondering. Uh, we also have this tiny little, I have a bunch of things on the table. I get the one thing that's not on the table, you know? You just sit there. Um, hauling all of the stuff out of the closet was great because I find a lot of gear and after these videos or live streams, I'm always like, I should sell some stuff. Uh, so if, no, I'm not gonna say if you are interested in anything, just let me know because most of this is not gonna be for sale anyway. <laughs> um, yes, oh, Matt's here. Hey, Matt. Yeah, uh, Blake and I were talking that uh, before the stream, what you put in front of your camera is only good if it's properly lit, so. Uh, lighting is a big, 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 big underrated part of filmmaking and cinematography in general. Um, uh, what are these little things? I think these are blind spots, crack lights, and I'm kind of torn on this name. <laughs> you know, this is the reaction. <laughs> um, they're very tiny USB powered lights. So I can just plug this in my computer. Let's see how they work. I haven't used this. I got this from their Kickstarter. And I'm like, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to use this every day. And um, I've used them once. So I oh, guess they do work. Disease and desire, right? Yes. Oh, well, they flared the lens a little bit. Beyond, there we go. We're using oh. Surrey lenses everywhere. So lens flares. Uh, they also have a dimmer, which I thought it was pretty neat considering the size of this thing. So the dimmer goes here on the USB. And it comes out on the other side. We have a close-up camera. Take that. Mm, there's an on-off switch. And I can dim them fairly efficiently. Huh. Yeah, this is kind of neat. Um, I want to use this for something, but I don't know what to do with them. Uh, so we have this. This is our first light. We have a very small amount. I think there's six of these. Um, four dimmers, some USB extensions. They remind me of defibrillator paddles. Like oh yeah, paddles. maybe when our lighting is kind of going dying on us, we use them to mm. poof, bring back to life. Anyway, and they live in a nucleus end case. 
All right, uh, Sam's asking about the Ivoscope. I've only played with it for a brief little moment, and I would say yes. I'd say it's uh, definitely worth it. Uh, the fear was, oh, there you go. Uh, in helmet and other applications, Matt is saying about the USB lights. There you go. Now I just need a helmet situation or cars. You need to start shooting in cars a lot. Yeah. Everything is on a car. Hey, here's my dad. Hey. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I had for the longest time are these quasars. These are T8, I think. Yeah, T8. And I got a bunch of tungsten collars. So the ones with orange taper tungsten. And a couple of daylight ones. Uh, nothing too particular about them. They make... Is this sound too weird? Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, they make nice soft light that wraps around a character pretty nicely and they're thin and light so you can just tape them to places, which I have done endlessly. What bugs me the most about them is that you can't daisy chain, so you can't connect one to the other. If you know this to be wrong, please correct me. I've been looking for a solution for a million years. Oh, look at that. It's your dad now. Yeah. Both dads are here. Um, we had Blake on a microphone uh, a couple of episodes ago. Yes. Um, but yeah, we need a, a dedicated microphone and a dedicated camera so we can see Blake not just in the reflection. Um, yeah, so quasars. I made these things, which are little clips. Uh, so the light will go on this side and these are 3d printed light will go on this side and this will clamp onto the arm of a c-stand and it allows us to save a lot of tape and also just quickly snap them into position and take them off easy as well uh, i'm pretty proud of it probably could be tighter or could use a different more sticky material so it doesn't slide all the time but yeah that's the invention Try to break it live. And it didn't break. Yeah, they hold up shockingly well. I'm surprised they haven't snapped. Yeah, I'm also surprised. They're very flexible. Okay, so these are quasars. Goodbye, quasars. This box belonged to different lights. I don't know which lights, but everything's repurposed in the lighting department. Hey, dang. Hey Broadway, how's it going? Uh, did we talk about Broadway musical? Yeah, we were just talking about Hamilton. So uh, how's that going for you? That's a Broadway musical, right? I think so. Okay, cool. Um, and then in this monopod bag, there's more lights. But I can't find the zipper to open this. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is a more random bag. We have a bunch of black wrap. We have these uh, that we like to call the lightsabers, which are USB powered LED sticks. They kind of work, right? As lightsabers. Yeah. And they have a few stages of brightness. So when I can't run power to the quasars and I need to hide something in a corner, this is what I resort to. Uh, I kind of bent some of these by banging them together. Playing That's lightsabers. The, the, uh, was it the spud at the bottom there? Yes. So you can go right into a C stand. Yep. Spud at the bottom allows us to get right into C stands. And if you take out the spud, this is a quarter inch hole. So you can screw it to anything of your liking. Um... <laughs> Trevor's asking if we can put an even wider lens. So this is the Surrey 24 mil on Super 35. Oh, look, it's my sister in the background. Um, what else is in here? So this is the accessories for the bowling light, which is up here, which is also, again, tiny lights. All of my lights are tiny. Uh, and if you guys got any questions about anything specifically, shoot. Anytime is the proper time. What else? This light is... Oh, look, it doesn't flare at all. Even on? Yeah, it is on. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. 
basically then. Basically then. It's too sideways. Yeah. And this light is a funny one because I got this when I I was going around in Europe and I was in Paris and I messaged, I posted on Instagram, hey, if you're in Paris and you want to hang out, just let me know. And this kid uh, sent me a message saying, hey, I want to show you some stuff and talk. And I'm like, sure, let's go. And then he gave me a light and he's like, I made this. It's powered by a V-Lock battery. It's got magnets and you can just stick it to things. And I'm like, that's pretty neat. Super neat. Um, and he was gonna, he was making like dozens of these and he was gonna turn them into an actual product. But later on, he was like, you know what? Never mind this. Actually, I'm gonna go into uh, software development and I'm gonna make other stuff. So I don't know how many of these are there in the world. And um, I've used this a couple of times, but never to its full potential. It's harder to find a magnetic surface for it. Uh, so that's lights, I guess. Let's see if I can still close this thing. You know what? Closing is for the week. We close stuff when we're done, right? Uh, yes, seriously. Uh, Trevor's asking. I like, I like that I disappear from camera. Uh, so the thing that I picked from the floor and I was going to jump the gun with is the Boltzen. 55 watt LED, which is also like a battery powered light or can be a battery powered light. And we used in the cookbook to create all the backlights and everything. And it's, it's a really, really cool little light that I wish it was cheaper because we could afford a bunch of them instead of just one. <laughs> uh, it's fairly light. It takes Sony NPF batteries and uh, good angle adjustment here it makes the this sound and you can put a c stand on it or you can put it on a c stand apparently it has wi-fi as well but we haven't used that feature yet uh, <laughs> so these are all the lights of anamorphic on a budget if you see us using something else call us on it <laughs> Like, you didn't explain this light. Everything is very small. Everything is very light. Ha ha ha. The lights are light. So many puns. So good. Um, if you just joined us, uh, we are finishing up on the lights here. And I would love to remind you that this channel is put together through blood, sweat, and tears. And most of the content here does not have any sort of sponsorship or money making apparatus so your support is fundamental to this and if you want to support by becoming a member that's absolutely awesome we have a few members in the chat you can see them in the green as the green names and little uh, badges or you can also send super chats that help us keep this going and pay for like a coffee cup that we have after the live stream so if you want to help us out that's how you do it. Thank you very much. Uh, so we talked about lights. Now we're going to move on to the camera stuff. What should we talk about first? Sphericals, scopes, other stuff. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, scopes? Scopes. All right. Um, let's see. I got a few questions here. Broadway is saying thanks to you. I got a Koa 8 z Gallius 44-2 taking lens in the FMJ and RMJ. Woohoo! I also have the single focus uh, solution from Rapido and a close-up die option. Nice. Good set. I'm curious to see what you shoot. Very, very nice. Uh, Trevor's asking why was I thinking Bolton was Aperture? Uh, no, it's not Aperture, it's Camera TV, or however you pronounce that. Uh, I find Aperture stuff to be pricier than competitors, so it's uh, a hard purchase. Max is asking if we checked out the Falcon Eyes RX818. Uh, no, I have not. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I have to check that out. I had people from Falcon Eyes contacting me a while ago, so maybe I have to reach out to them and see what's up because that would be cool. Yeah, booming COBs is not the best. We usually do it with the uh, with the quasars or the lightsabers for like top lights. Yeah. Um, Lucas asking why does YouTube dictate the green color for members? By the way, uh, I do not know. I would change this. Yesterday, I would say blue, but Blake and I have been talking and it would probably be yellow now. All right, uh, let's bring out the Lomos and um, let's see. I guess this is it. Lomos. Oh my God. This is going to get fun because this case is so big. I'm going to have to open it this way and disappear behind it. All the sound effects in this episode. Yay. Is this normal? Is anyone's like rubber from the case falling off? I always wanted to ask, but never had the chance. Now I did. Okay, so these are the Lomos. They are for the moment two. There's a whole space here for a third, 75 mil. Uh, we have a 35 and a 50. So this is what it looks like. Uh, everything is smooth. It's very heavy. This is a workout just holding. And I've started to get people interested into the into them in town for music videos and and stuff, which finally it will become something. So this is the 35 and I'm going to get the 50 now. If you have questions about specific aspects of lenses that I'm holding in the moment, please ask them. Don't miss your chance. Do you want to tell the pancake story? Oh, what is the pancake story? The, of you at the, or the story of the person uh, wanting to rent the limos right behind you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, these lenses went out on a shoot recently because I went with Ariana to have breakfast on a coffee shop nearby. And we never go there, but we went this day. And I was, we sat outside next to us, sat two other guys. And we overhear them talking about cameras and shooting and blah, blah, blah. And Ariana's like, do you think they know the channel? I'm like, okay, let's figure out. Uh, let's see how long it takes until they recognize me or something. And they're talking about this shoot on a farm and something. And as we are sitting there, I get a text. And the text says, hey, I got your number from so-and-so. He said that you have a set of Lomos and we're looking to uh, test them out on a shoot. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I, I was expecting this message, so I'm going to reply right now. So I reply to the message and say, hey, I got a 35 and a 50, um, and I got a Zoom, but they are rehoused and good to go as, whenever you need. And I hit send, and I see the guy on the table right across from me pick up his phone. It's like, oh, man, he's got a 35 and a 50 mil Lomos that are just rehoused. I'm going to say this is like an independent production, and and we are... We're trying to put this together. We really want to shoot anamorphic. And then I'm I'm listening to this and thinking, no way. So he sends another message and my phone buzzes immediately. I'm like, okay, I know I'm talking to this dude. So I, I go up to him and I'm like, dude, you're talking to me. You're messaging me right now. And he's like, what, what, what? And I'm like, the guy with the Lomos, that's me. And he's like, no way. And so we talk a bunch. And they ended up renting the lenses uh, for the shoot and they worked exactly as they expected. And they also like love the zoom, the photon uh, that I'm going to pull up next. But it worked and I just ran into them at the coffee shop. But it has never happened before. I don't think it'll happen again. <laughs> uh, so this is the 50. This is going to be the room for the 75 when it comes eventually. Simon's caps, beautiful, amazing, love it. Uh, and these lenses have the problem that this back is too thick. 
So they don't usually fit an Alexa mount, which is why I 3D printed a bunch of little wings uh, for the Alexa so you can replace the mount with these guys and have the lenses fit. Uh, it was a, a challenge. Uh, members of the channel have seen this happen a long time ago. This was like, what, six, more than six months ago. Um, and they work. I got them printed in metal and um, they already paid themselves off, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay. So these are the Lomos. Uh, let's see if anyone has questions. People are surprised by the size of this thing. Um, all right, all right, all right. Steve Holt, I just picked up an FVD 16B and an achromatic diopter to add to my kit. Nice. All right. Glue the rub rubber. All right. Thanks, Matt. I will do that. All right. <laughs> yeah, so the Lomos, they need support. Uh, they need to be properly held up. Otherwise, they're just going to unbuckle the mount of the camera. <laughs> Um, we tested the 35 on the, what is it called? The Crane 3S with Matt at one point and it, it held up. So it was nice. It was fun. I'm going to make this more centered. Um, Dwayne is saying that must be several thousand dollars. I'm not going to disclose how much I spent on this. Um, <laughs> and do you have videos for a complete newbie to get started with anamorphic? Absolutely, Dwayne. Uh, look up the playlist anamorphic 101 and you're going to get a good start. And then you jump straight into the anamorphic cookbook. If you want to know more about specific lenses, uh, you can literally just search on the channel because I've talked about a lot of options. Um, so that's that. Yeah, the lenses do look bigger if I'm holding them. On a camera, they look just massive but on my hands they look gigantic uh, <laughs> uh eric saying i didn't mention the lomos in the cookbook about uh cinnamon consumer anamorphics in which category are the lomos in your opinion oh the lomos are definitely cinema cinema anamorphics uh they are more expensive than atlas and will still be more expensive than atlas forever <laughs> Broadway is asking, so if that anamorphic projection is 35 mil, how does the final focal length work? Let's say if I use a 50 mil taking lens with that, or is that even a thing? So these lenses are full lenses. They have a spherical lens inside and the anamorphic block uh, in the back. Uh, so you don't need a taking lens for this. It's, it's all in one package, which is why I would classify them as cine anamorphics. I mean, these were used to make movies, so <laughs> they are cine anamorphics. And adapters, which need taking lenses, won't have a focal length. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, Matt is pointing Dwayne right to the channel. Thanks, Matt. Matt's doing the work of the Lord here. Uh, Grant is saying, making me self-conscious about throwing all my lenses in a tough little camera bag. But then I remember all my gear combined cost less than this level. Well, if it makes you any happier, this is how I usually transport the gear I'm taking to shoots. Uh, if it's a small shoot and it fits in this bag, it goes in this bag. Uh, only when it's a bigger shoot that I need multiple cases that I take everything else but otherwise it just goes in a bag <laughs> it's more discreet all right all right i'm saying a lot of all right all right uh, na, na, na. uh you spent uh trevor spent two years looking for a good condition photon i had two the first one i landed on it by chance but that was also to 2013 and it was okay it was it was cheap at the time, honestly, cheap. Oh, is the thing out? Is the rubber out? Uh, yeah, so. I'm just going to close one side and be done with it. The second photon I got on a trade, actually. Um, I was selling my Iskurama 54 at the time, 
And one of the interested parties was like, hey, do you want to do a trade on this lens? And I traded this Chroma 54 for the Photon uh, and I gave him 500 bucks or something like that. And the lens was pretty great, but it only really started to shine recently. So this is the Photon. Shine recently when I sent it to Ilya Volkov, who does the optical Moscow optical workshop stuff on Facebook on and Instagram. And Ilya tuned everything to perfection. So we've used this a bunch of times. I've had people for music videos show up and be like, you have an anamorphic zoom? And <laughs> be really excited about this lens. It's very slow. I'm going to get it out so everyone can be shocked at the size of this thing. <sighs> So this is the photon. It's yay big. Let's get this lens cap out. Doing things one handed is always a challenge. And this is the lens. This is what it looks like. It's pretty big. It's longer than the other ones. It's about the same weight, I would say. Uh, and it's only uh, f4.5 or t4.5 and f3.3 if I'm not mistaken. So it's a slow zoom. It's for daytime shoots and, and things like that. And it's also a nightmare to get filters on it because of the square front <laughs> fun. Hey, hey, so this is how I got my photon and it matches pretty well with the other Lomos. It's a little softer overall, although it's slower, but I like this lens a lot and I wish I had more opportunities to use them. I think I'm going to say this about all the gear today. I like this a lot and I wish I had more chances to use it. So this is the photon. Let's see what's happening here. All right, all right. Lots of people pointing to the cookbook. Uh, Matt's pointing the triangle rules. And yeah. Matt loves Lomos much more than Atlas. Okay. I love the image from the Photon. Yeah, I love it too. I think it's pretty neat when you manage to get it on a, pro on a project that works with it. Otherwise, you're just going to be stressed. We shot, we shot an entire project with it, right? Almost. Almost, yeah. We had some shots with the 35 and 50, and all shots with the 35 were ditched. So it was basically this and the 50. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. Like Blake was running focus and zoom motors at the same time. <laughs> it was a challenge. Yeah, super fun though. Super, super fun. Uh, we're now looking into doing some more anamorphic zooms with uh, Laowa's Oom. Gotta say, I love the name of this lens. Yeah. The Oom. Uh, and the rear anamorphic. So we're going to do some testing if the weather permits. Along with the Photon, I have a bunch of diopters. So these are big uh, four and a half inch diopters, plus half, plus two, and plus three. And I have a square, four by four, 0 0.8, which I've never seen again or found any records of it. So I would love to find more square diopters. I'm going to put it, bring this out because it's so strange, it's so unusual. Uh, like it's a square diopter. Mm -hmm. Broadway is asking, so Cine Anamorphic looks like that, 35 mil, wait. Oh. So Cine Anamorphic like that looks 35 mil on Super 35, like a Komodo would be what focal length in the conversion. Um, we're trying to abolish those terms, like conversion and, and focal length equivalences. It's just a matter of how much of the image circle you're using. Um, technically, you would multiply it by the, the crop factor, so 1.5-ish. And that would lead you to like a roughly 50 mil vertical and 25 mil horizontal. But that's a tricky road to go through. Uh, I would recommend just believing it's a 35 mil because they are designed for Super 35 anyways. Uh, so there's that. Uh, it's a reasonable size for a photon. 
Uh, Matt's asking, does the photon change t-stop values as you zoom or is it constant? It is constant because yeah, it's constant. And prefer synchro over VD for a few reasons. We've discussed this before. Yep. Um, the photon is synchro, so you should like that one too. <laughs> okay. What now? Uh, let's get the Orion or Onion as I was reading this morning. So I think this is the newest lens addition to the gear closet. It's an Atlas Orion 40 mil. There's nothing too unusual about this. Um, we use it a lot more than I thought we would, right? <laughs> Every now and then we're like, oh, we got to grab a shot. And we just default to either this or the Suray lenses because it's so easy. It's so straightforward. Uh, that's what we go for. And it has helped a lot in making all of the content in the channel anamorphic. Like a lot. Which has happened. Everything has been shot anamorphic since we started the cookbook. All the videos are 239 to 1. And it sucks because we lost the end screens. But now we are proper anamorphic. Yeah. Um... Uh, any questions about the the Orion? Trevor, when I was looking at Photon, they were five to ten K on eBay probably seven years ago. Yeah, they were like twelve or something recently in the last two or three years. And I don't know, I don't think that's a fair price. I really don't think it's a fair price for those lenses. If you had to compare the, the mm. Atlas to uh, uh, the Lomos. The Lomos? What would you say about it? I'd say the Lomos feel heavier, like the Lomos feel more cumbersome to use, uh, while the Atlas feels more natural. It's weird to say that, but it, it's true. And I think the Atlas is a bit cleaner when wide open or at 2.8 than the Lomos are, but I might be mistaken there. Um, I like the constant squeeze in the Atlas versus the Lomos, which is the opposite of what Matt says. And we actually have a great shot for that, uh, Matt. For I think we used it on the cookbook on video 2.4. Uh, and it's a shot with the Lomo 50 mil showing the squeeze factor changing over yeah. the focus range. Uh, so I, I like the keeping the squeeze constant and I really like the minimum focus of this compared to the Lomos because we can get way closer it's way easier to rig it's not way easier it's just same to rig diopters I guess I don't know I'm biased yeah. <laughs> do you do you think you could ever mix the two sets like the Lomos and the Atlas on the same project I think we could I think we could mix both sets um do you think it would have been better to get like what are they, you have the 50 and the 35. Oh, yeah. Would, would, it, would it have been better to get like an Atlas 80 mm -hmm. um, and then kind of have a complete set almost? Yeah, I don't think it would have been the way to go, at least for me, because you can shoot an entire movie on the 35 or on, a, or on a 40. And that's kind of the vibe. Like if I'm using the 35, I'm committing to that look. And if I'm using this 40, I'm committing to this look. Uh, it also like it's more rentable. A lot of people out there would be like, oh, that's a mixed set. No way I'm going to get that. Yeah. Um, well, if they have to get one focal length and it's a very versatile one, such as 40 or 35 mil, I think that's a more popular choice. So that was my reasoning for choosing the 40. I think the 40 is the most fun lens in their lineup. Yeah. We, we shot with all of them, so we kind of know. <laughs> the 32 was also dope. But it was too wide. Okay, so that's the Orion. I'm getting surrounded by lenses here. Uh, let's see. I think the Atlas lenses are great. I find very odd how much people complain about them in the in Facebook forums. Yeah, people like to complain. Um, my experience is that people that want to complain have a more 
have more energy to do so than the people who just appreciate things. Like it's much more likely that you'll see someone complaining about something than someone praising something else. Um, so it's just, if you're dissatisfied, you're likely to complain. And if you're satisfied, you're likely to stay quiet. That's my perspective. Uh, if you agree or disagree, let me know. Uh, people in the Facebook group can't afford Atlas. It's probably why they have so many complaints. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, the Atlas are housed in a lightweight aluminum casing. It's, uh, it feels lighter than the Lomo, but I haven't put them on scales to compare. Uh, Matt's saying that he wants the Zelmas uh, badly. We reached out to them, not directly. I had a guy, a friend in the US reach out to them and they were like, yeah, we're not interested in testing comparisons at the moment. So that kind of died there, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We might be able to get a set in the near future. Still in this co-planned, let's get all the adapters out here because there's a bunch of them. All right. Uh, Empirate is asking, what do I think about Atlas Sharpness at 2? It's very different than 2.8, or is it usable at 2? We shot a bunch at 2. The one thing that you have to get right is your back focus, like your shims and your flange to sensor distance, you have to get that right. Because otherwise it's gonna perform poorly. And we shot a bunch of times in, in T2, we shot a bunch in T28, we usually go for T28 uh, when we can afford. Uh, but I don't have a problem shooting wide open. I think it is usable. And if you've seen the cookbook, you've seen shots at T2. And no one complained. <laughs> I think that's my motto in life. It's like, I'm going to prove you wrong, but I'm not going to tell you about it. <laughs> okay, so these are the adapters I have right now. This is a Koa 16H, which I found locally. So a Craigslist purchase. And it's just a backup plan for the Elmoscope 2 that's in this housing. We're going to open one of these two guys and put black paint to completely kill veiling glare and everything else that's in this lens uh, in an upcoming video. So that's why we have two. <laughs> I also have a Schneider Cinelux uh, ES, the black version, which apparently it's harder to find and more expensive. But this was given to me by the folks at Schneider. Uh, as I help them move towards a, a something, a project that I guess I don't, I can't talk about right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is also Rapido FMJs. And I don't have a front focusing solution. Here's an Isco Red with Lucas's famous grab hole. It does not want to come off. Here we go. So this is rigged all with uh, 3D printed parts. And it's much lighter than the metal housing. Much easier to deal with. Uh, I'm gonna I'm planning to do a, a something explaining how this works and everything because Lucas's work is amazing. Uh, so th there's another adapter. These last two adapters are pretty clean in terms of image quality. We have a Cine Digitar 1.33, which is a projector lens, and it's massive. The focus throw on this is, I don't even know, endless is how it feels. It ended? No. Yeah, it's more, it's more, okay, here we go. And this is the focus throw. It hasn't ended yet. At one point it starts to get scary. Oh, it ended, okay. <laughs> uh, so dealing with this with double focus is impractical and I have to figure out how to rig a single focus solution in front of it. Probably the FVD35A, uh, but that's a upcoming project. 
and last we have this quirky Delrama Prism Anamorphic. I've had so many of these over time. Um, I don't know why I keep coming back to the slides. I have to figure it out and get rid of some because I have two right now and I only need one. Uh, this one has a two times squeeze and the other one has a 1.5, which is also a little known fact that these exist in two different squeeze factors. And last, I have a phone kit here, which is the Moondog Labs lens that goes on my phone with a variable ND. A rig for putting this in front of the webcam. What is this? Do I have another lens here? I don't think I do, but maybe I do. Let's figure it out. And diopters. No, I don't. It's just lens caps. Okay. So I think these are all the anamorphics that I have. Oh, no, they're not. There's one more. This never ends. We're never going to get to the rest of the gear. We're just going <laughs> to talk about the scopes. <laughs> yeah, so the last anamorphic that I have is the maxi scope, which is here. Hey, come out. So this is our maxi scope from Exo Optic and it's a really, really cool solution for these chromats. Out of all the stuff, this is probably the only one that's going to stay forever. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Max to finish up his uh, Nexiscope project. But yeah, and in this case, live all the diopters that one might dream or need. So we have a plus half, plus one, plus two, plus 0 0.8, plus 1.2, plus 0 0.4. And all of them are acromats, and all of them are sort of large. Um, and they go with East Karama, wherever it goes. So that's that. That's all the anamorphic adapters. Now I really got to get the, the chat updated here. Uh, Trevor, I still think Zomas are like an urban myth. <laughs> like they don't really exist. They do. Max tested them out. Um, and I know there's a couple sets in the US, but that's about it. The Bolex, uh, so Trevor, basically the Bolex Muller 819 never comes off my S1H. Have a Kobe and H that never sees the light of day anymore. Maybe you should sell it. Uh, just saying. I remember all the lenses you had before the great sell off two years ago. Yep. That was, that was about two years ago. Uh, yeah. I had way more adapters. This is already too much, but I'm keeping these for now for the cookbook. So once we pass the cookbook module on adapters, everything will go kind of, and then there's going to be like the great sell off part two. That's the idea. Um, Broadway saying I spy the FMJ Broadway, you should really become a member of the channel. I think you're going to get a lot of good stuff that you're not really expecting, but your questions are very good. And I think you will blend right in. Anyway, I spy the FMJ. I still have trouble figuring out which screws will allow me to freely rotate my projection lens. It's a hassle. Yeah, you know, very true. Uh, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> um, and private is saying that I'm awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, the cookbook is so awesome. Are you planning to release a cinematography course talking more about the aspects of creativity, framing, and more? I'll buy it for sure. I'm glad to hear that. We're working on not a course. I don't I don't like selling things. Uh, Blake and I have talked about this. We don't like paywalls. Uh, the memberships are like as big of a paywall as we hope to ever have. And it's just a temporary thing. Like everything comes out for free anyways. So... Uh, do it Broadway. Uh, I think you should also become a member because you're going to get more cookbook stuff and more early access to videos. But I'm talking to a lens manufacturer about making a series that focuses on the creative aspects of using anamorphic. So like exploring a wider aspect ratio for framing and what that leads in terms of the other departments. How does it uh, resonate with sound? Resonate with sound. Uh, what the art department can do to improve production value and all of those things that kind of 
don't go don't come to mind immediately uh but i got some topics that i want to talk about and a lot of them fall into this category i don't think i'm good enough to be like here's a cinematography course it's not my thing we're always too much on the technical so we're gonna play to our strong side here <laughs> um all right uh steve holt saying i just picked up a synchro type c last month nice um is it the same as the code 8c as far as mods like blackening out the inside to remove glare i think so but i did not uh try that uh i think tim linson on the facebook group or jsd might have more information those guys have seen a lot more scopes than i have in the last couple of years but the whole thing with disassembling the the Elmo scope or the Koa is to it's more of a curiosity like I think the weakest aspect of the Koa's is the veiling glare so if we can tackle that even if it's an awkward hard to execute solution I think it's going to make the lens better uh, it's definitely going to make me more inclined to use it because <laughs> everything is glaring so that's that uh it's a glaring issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is exactly what I needed. Um, Eric Dorman is saying, the focus on my 50 mil Lomo is quite stiff and my focus motor doesn't get it. Do you have experience with that and a recommendation for not that expensive and stronger motor? Uh, the motor that we have been using since when? Uh, Pretty much not, since the summer. Our summer was when we first used it, right? Because that was the same the model, the Tilta yeah yeah it was for quarantine quarantine yeah. kind of kicked it into existence but you didn't own one yet. yeah so we used one that was owned by our first ac at the time uh yandy and she was great and then after the show i was like i definitely need this so i sold my nucleus nano and i bought the m because it has more power it can spin the lomos nicely it can spin the photon which is a challenging lens and yeah sometimes it does get stiff uh i don't really know what to do that's not the type of lens that i would disassemble to re-grease um because it's just too much of a complicated thing i don't i don't feel comfortable disassembling that expensive of a lens just yet <laughs> um so that's that but yeah we we've used we've been using the nucleus m extensively for everything and it has served us pretty well we have a we have a video actually featuring something that we're doing with this coming up soon and it's a really really creative solution so i think you guys are gonna like it or at least enjoy it uh, it has to do with Suray, so maybe some people will be thrown off by it. Tilta! We're trying to get them to sponsor us uh, for some of the cookbook. If you know anyone at Tilta, uh, let us know. <laughs> okay, so this is focus. Oh, this is going to be so good to put away later. I'm just piling cases on cases. Um, all right, let's see. Broadway is going to become a member. Yes, do it. Uh, so you can get on Discord. The Discord group is getting more active thanks to no one less than Satan. Uh, <laughs> and it's getting more interesting. Okay, so Alan Nicholas, what do you think of SLR Magic's Anamorph 50mm lens adapter? I have a review on that, uh, more than one. I have a review on the 50, a review on the 40, a review on the 40 compact. And you can watch those. They are basically the lenses used inside SLR Magic's full lenses, full anamorphot lenses, which I was just cutting some tests yesterday. So uh, I've been looking at the footage a lot. They have some some issues, but overall, I think I like them. I like the the character, although it's not for everybody. <laughs> Um, Char, if you do a course, you should do it with Media Division. It would break the internet. Is that guy human? He seems freakishly smart. Yeah, Nicholas is a genius. Um, he the second part of Scope actually shows more of the stuff that I do here, so we're gonna show up more there. 
but he works on a crazy schedule and I don't know if I can keep up. Uh, eventually we'll figure out how to collaborate more because yeah, his, his work is absolutely next level. We're, we're running to catch up here, but <laughs> it's hard. All right. Uh, Grant is saying, I predict, I predict close-ups of Henry Fonda in a cowboy hat for the cinematography video. <laughs> All right. Super psyched about that. André Ora. Tito, parabéns por toda a informação que você compartilha. If you don't understand Portuguese, uh, he's saying uh, sort of like congratulations, thanks for all the information that you share and my pleasure. Uh, I'm glad to help and I'm just trying to do what wasn't there when I was doing this stuff. <laughs> when I was trying to figure out the answers, there was no one doing this. So, um, and private is saying I cannot be a member in my country. Google has an agreement to activate memberships here. Oh no, oh, that sucks, man. Um, damn. Um, find me on Facebook. Uh, yeah, send me a message. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll do something about this. Uh, Broadway, what I love about the co that that I didn't expect because I'm a Blue Flare fan is that I really love that I didn't find... <laughs> So you're a Blue Flare fan, but what you love the most is that you didn't find a Blue Flare 8Z. The natural flares on mine make it very unique and distinct. Yes, very true. The ember flares are pretty sweet. I like them a lot too. Um, and it goes to show you never know what you're going to love. Yeah, at least until you see it. Um, Andre is asking, for Panasonic LA7200, do you think it's possible to open and clean the glass elements easily? I remember you had done, you had some before. Yes, it's very easy. There's, I think, two little screws or four little screws in the back. You just have to be careful to not strip those. And the whole body comes apart in two pieces and you can clean everything inside. The hardest part would be to close without getting any more dust in. So uh, that's, that's my experience. Oh, Satan is here. Woohoo. Nice. Um, and Private is saying, I see every video you release and I have your two PDFs. Oh, man. Best work on Anamorphic by far. I would love to see more stuff from you talking about other topics. Pretty sure you'll crush it. Yay. Thank you. Blake and I have been discussing this a lot recently. Other topics and how to broaden our scope. Bam. <laughs> if I duck, do you show up? No. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Broadway, thank God for my nucleus M. I've had a nano and I was like, okay, this is not going to work on a senior big lens setup. Uh, yes, it does not. That was the reason why I gave up on the nano. Uh, I guess we do have still more anamorphic lenses in here, I realize. And this is the part where everybody bails on the stream because uh, it's Surrey. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> I think these are the lenses we use the most uh, compared to anything else that we've shown so far. Uh, I got the 35 and the 50 here, the 24 is on that camera, on the wide camera. <laughs> wow, meta filming. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to get focused. <laughs> uh, and then we have another 50 here on the GH5. Uh, but the Surrey lenses are super fun, super versatile, super easy to use. Uh, we got fancy lens caps going on. Uh, I'm going to get colorful lens caps from Ron once uh, he catches up with demand. And uh, these are the what, latest addition to the Anamorphic collection and uh, wildly popular. My sister has shot a bunch of stuff on this already. And, and, and she's like, I love these lenses. I got to use them more. I'm like, yes, do it. All right. Uh, Send more questions. Hit the like button, please. Our ratings are very low. Please. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? We have some contacts. Let's talk about Soviet. Is it a Soviet? I don't know if this is Soviet or the focus unit. Let's find out. It's the Soviet set. Yeah, so we have this very early serial number set of Soviet lenses that are all silver surfaced by Ilya again the same guy who worked on the photon and 
these guys are unique. Like, I don't think there's another set like this anywhere else out there. And man, I really should shoot more. I just got to start using this stuff everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the set was in various condition when I got it. Some lenses were pretty bad. Some were missing pieces. Some of them still are missing pieces like this tire. You look at it and it's like, oh, it's fine. And then as you focus further, you'll see that there's a piece missing right here. <laughs> uh, but Elia has cleaned up, polished, made them all silver again, remarked everything that's on the bodies. Uh, adjusted the glass in all of them for perfection and then i finished by adding m42 adapters uh, m42 to ef actually it's m39 and cine rings on the front so i have a standard front throughout the entire set but yeah these are epic lenses that i need to get more out there so people can understand how awesome they are yeah, my Soviet collection. All right. Uh, Steve Holt, I gave up on my Nucleus N2. <laughs> I had to upgrade to the M. Everybody kind of gets the N and is like, oh, this is going to work perfectly, but then it doesn't. Uh, so that's the thing. Alessandro Paolone is asking, Hi, Tito, is there any way to shoot effectively 35mm on the Black Magic Pocket 4K? What do you mean effective 35 mil? Um, I think the Suray 24 mil should be good enough for that uh, to give you like a 35 mil equivalent crop. But I'm not entirely sure right now. There's some math involved that I can't do while talking to so many other people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Pocket 4K should be okay. The 6K is a little tougher because of the EF mount. Uh, Andre Oliver is asking, did you ever had problem with the nucleus and then not connecting to the controller, not connecting the controller to the motor? I don't think so, but I didn't use it as much as I hoped to. Like I've definitely used more the M more than I use the Nano, comparing like two years of having the Nano and five months of having the M. All right. Um, and private sent me a friend request on Facebook, so now we can figure this out. Thank you. Glad you did it. Uh, Andreora, do you think those series could work on Ursa Mini Pro Super 35 sensor with no workarounds? No, they could not. Because the Ursa Mini is EF mount and you cannot mount the Surays on EF yet. Hopefully they will fix that. Uh, but yeah, there's no, there's no solution for there. Yeah, oh, well, Lucas tackled it. All right, so Air in Indiana says Nucleus Nano does sometimes have issues with when controller too close to the motor. There you go. I don't think I ever run into that problem. Uh, yes, Broadway, you did it. I am so happy right now. We're going to go celebrate after this live stream. Uh, we're going to party hard, Blake and I, COVID safe. <laughs> um. All right, uh, Broadway saying I tried a SuperTac 51 as my taking lens, and it was a beautiful image. Yeah, the SuperTacs tend to have like warm coatings, right? So it would match the warm flares of the Koa. Nice, nice combo. Uh, Contra Katze, is it true that the Suri disc is different regarding the focal point? Yes. Is it a problem in the real world, or is it more of a synthetic problem? Um, it's a problem if you rack from really close all the way to infinity in the same shot, then you're going to have your squeeze be weird. But also, it's mm, it's a problem, but it's, it's not as much of a problem. You can probably address it by eye if you do it every shot, if you're really, really picky about it. Uh, again, we're working on a solution for that, which should be here soon. So fingers crossed that that will work. Uh, but yeah. All right, all right, Andre saying beautiful collection. Keep going. Um, we only have one more case with lenses. Um, so I guess we'll go 10 minutes over our time. 
Alessandro Polone, I mean 35 mil equivalent without vignetting. Yeah, I think the Surrey 24 is probably going to work with you then. Because of the crop factor versus the squeeze factor versus the focal length. Uh, 24, 48 divided by 1.3. Yeah, it's going to give you a 36 mil horizontal field of view. So kind of, yep. All right. Grand celebrates. Nice. Yes. Um, Thiago is asking, have an affordable solution like Surrey for Canon mount? Uh, no. Surrey is kind of owning the whole market right now, and nobody has come close to it. Like The closest option would be SLR Magic's PL uh, lenses, which are also 1.33 but they are much pricier than Surrey and they're not as crisp as the image you're getting from Surrey. So what else? Uh, I guess we're not gonna talk to, about cameras. Instead of talking about the contact set, which is kind of missing pieces right now. Where did that go? This is my favorite non-lens thing. The focus station, <laughs> where this is a very, very like hands-on project. Let's let's do this. First of all, this is a Nanic 915 case, and I made a custom tray so I could layer things underneath it, <laughs> and I cut holes on the top of the thing so the the station would fit in here so the holes underneath contain all the accessories like batteries cables uh, a spud uh, some three quarters to hot shoe mounts an arm antennas and here we have the proper focus station which is my the thing this was made with like amazon parts and a good monitor and a good follow focus it's powered by a v-lock battery and it mounts on a C stand or any stand, it depends on, on your connection. And it features a wireless receiver here, plus a wireless transmitter that's in the case that goes on the camera. So from here, you control your focus, you monitor your image, you don't need any cables tethering you to the camera, and you can just be freestyling, just like hold your station as you're pulling, then put it on the stand and walk away to address other issues. Um, this took a lot longer than I would like to admit to build, but we did it. And we have a 702 here. All the power is coming to a DTAP splitter that's here at the, here at the bottom. So we're powering the receiver, the monitor, and when we had the Nano, it was also powering the Nano, but the Nucleus M does not have an external power uh, input, or maybe it does, um, but I, I'm not powering it. The batteries last long enough. And you can still charge your phone on this. So this is one of my happiest creations. <laughs> it's really, really useful, super useful. And look at this tray made of cardboard and uh, duct tape. Took me hours to get this right. <laughs> ah. All right, Andre saying I love the affordable range rangefinder series. There a solution to mix the focus with the cheaper one using the focus design with the optics of the cheaper one. I don't know. Maybe Lucas can. I think Lucas has been working on some focusing solution projects recently and uh, he might be better equipped to answer this question and broadway is saying that <laughs> he's using the focus nano focus wheel okay yeah so yeah if i had the sorry if i had the nano focus wheel here i could power it from the v-lock battery as well but yeah okay uh the only thing that we didn't cover i guess was the contact set but that's pretty standard spherical lens. Uh, and uh, we're, I don't know, do you guys want to see it? 
Blake, how's your energy level? We can see if you are. Blake's tired. <laughs> JK, I am tired. Um, we are cinema is saying hello. How's it going? Uh, it's going well, I would say. Yeah, right. Hoping to get vaccinated sometime in the next couple months. You know, if I get vaccinated before my birthday, never gonna happen. That would be awesome. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, Late summer. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Contacts. And contacts. Wow, putting this away is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Everything is awesome. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, so the contact set is composed of actually eight lenses, but we only have seven here right now. Um, we got, I'm going to tilt this forward. 21, uh, 2, 8. 28 f2 which is not here it's on repairs 3514 514 8514 and 1352 um, these are all mm versions because of the ninja star bouquet that we're trying to avoid and they have all been remounted to ef and fully decked out with sim mods front rings and front caps uh, these are some of my earliest designs in lens caps and i still like them a lot I have caps the numbers on the back as well because you never know maybe the lens is upside down and you can find out which one it is uh, they all fit inside this case pretty well uh, in this pouch i have variable nd filters and step rings the most common sizes these are all sharing the same front size and that saves me a ton of money i guess and time when selecting step rings I've always wanted to replace this with like a clear LED, not a clear LED, a clear acrylic panel with LEDs behind it. So when you open it, it's like a kind of ah moment, uh, but I never got to it. So maybe sometime in the future, we'll do that. And then to complement the set, these are extras. This is the 15 millimeters uh, F3.5. Woo! <laughs> um, which is more of a specialty lens. It's a rectilinear 33 mil. And it's the focus is a bit stiff on this one, but it's a lens that people get impressed whenever they use it. Uh, did we ever use this? No, right? No. Okay, looks yeah. To yeah, I don't think we used this in a while. And then the only lens in the set that is the German version is the 60 mil f28 macro because the german version needs this stupidly long uh focus gear because the whole lens kind of extends by a lot so you can get one-to-one -one magnification while the japanese version only allows you to get two to one or one to two magnification so this gets a lot closer to your subject um, and i find that pretty neat but yeah, these are more specialty lenses, so they live in a separate case that is smaller and they go out whenever these uh, situations require. But yeah, let's see what this is, where this is going here. All right. Lucas is saying the focus is really dependent on having the lens elements that fit the casing. So it depends entirely on the wide angle you want to use and how the glass is shaped. Also, because the distances of the elements, there's always a chance you won't reach infinity anymore. Yeah, that's a big deal. Mm, a guy on the Facebook group modified the focus to fit another wide angle, but I'm not actually a fan of that. <laughs> Did he give you credit, though? Um, Andre is saying, hope to see more cheap rangefinders. Just got a Sanker 16D for 350 highs. Wow, that's really cheap. Really good deal. Congratulations. And I'm working on a cheap anamorphic set. Very nice. Uh, we are cinema caught my slip with a 15 mil. That was close, but not as close as it looked. And yeah, rectilinear wide is Kubrick style. The 21 is also rectilinear, but the 15 is hardcore. Um, all right. Yeah, Media Division really cranked up the price on these guys, um, just like how we do it for Anamorphics. 
but I think I got mine before their video was out. Okay, uh, Andre Lucas Puff, if I really. I really like the 3D print gear design of the Focus over the M65 Helicoid as it would be way cheaper. And Alan Nicholas is saying, saying, do you think Suray will come out with a two times scope and what are your thoughts? I think they will. It might take longer than what we're expecting or what the general population is expecting because it's a whole different optical design. But we'll see. Maybe these crowdfunding campaigns will pan out into two times lenses or EF lenses. If you had to choose between EF 133 or two times mirrorless, what would be what would be the choice? That's actually a good market research question. Um, yeah, Luke is saying cheaper depends on how much you value your time. Oof, that is so true. <laughs> uh, the N65 helicoids are good once relubed, but unfortunately often too small. I'm going to stick with the contact size because I love them and they're super cheap comparatively. Yeah, yeah, same here. I, I decided to go with the contacts as opposed to Leica R's because they were cheaper and they were not hyped. I tend to not like things when they're hyped. Like it's hyped, I'm like, oh, go the other way. <laughs> so that's, that's where we are. Uh, I think we talked about everything. There's some random bits and pieces here and there, but... We're way over time and um, thank you guys for being here. If you haven't liked the video yet, this is the best moment to do so. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and join us uh, for all the other stuff. There's more videos coming up. There's more cookbook stuff coming on Monday. Uh, Blake's laughing for some reason and I'm concerned. I don't know if, oh yeah, it's just very improperly scaled. <laughs> um the cookbook stuff's coming more um uh, on this week and if you're a member of the channel you just get early access to almost everything we were working on a schedule to let you guys know when things are coming out and to be more organized with our own planning and execution of videos a lot of stuff to go so yeah subscribe I'll see you on Monday and I'll see you again on, on Thursday. Um, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I think this is it. Bye. Bye. Farewell. This is my radio voice and you can hear this over the...